Welcome back to the Crooked Spine Show. All of us want to work out and stay healthy, even when we sometimes we have a routine of doing yoga, Pilates, uh, weights, across the class, whatever it is. Sometimes you still have some pains. And today's talk is with Denise. She is a long-term trainer at the Gibson Center uh, down here in Upland. And she has done a phenomenal job helping seniors especially stay healthy and strong by having routine classes that she offers. Overall, in her class today, we talk about exactly how do we stay consistent with exercise? How do we make sure even outside our classes that we do take, we can still do things like watch our posture when we're standing and sitting. Also, how do we walk? And how can we stretch at home even when we're not in class to make our body stay loose and also strong? Today's talk, specifically talk about certain exercises, about exactly how to sit, how to stand, how to check those postures sitting and standing, along with how to walk properly and what to look for in your overall gait when you do walking. We'll also talk about the, the kickback exercise, how to do that properly standing. Also, a knee pain relief exercise too, which I walked through the overall video. And also too, um, how do we stretch our hamstrings and how do we keep them loose and how do we use the wall to do that so we don't hurt our overall back. Next, as we, another exercise we talk about too is a lunge exercise, not only for a leg stretching, also hip and knee, but also getting our overall body and our back loose too. And how do we really rest when we sit? Do we hunch forward? Do we sit up? Do we lean back more? How do we do that properly? Also too, when we're, can we do a modified hip and knee stretch when we sit? I go over this too with one of Denise's students. So do I talk to my friends? Again, the show notes has links to the actual video if you want to watch those too. Great way to kind of learn how to exercise and stretch at home and overall watch your posture when you sit, stand, and when you move around. So enjoy the work, my friends. Have a good week, and we'll see you next week. Ladies, this is Dr. Tony Rackett, and we're so pleased to have him joining us. As you know, he's a chiropractor, and his practice is here in Upland, correct? And I actually have some handouts for you. I'm share once, once we're done here. Um, if you guys would mind taking a moment, introducing yourself, maybe give them a little bit of your background and stuff, and then we'll take it from there. If that's I okay with you. Do. That'd be great. Okay. Hi, I'm Marisa. Hey, John. Nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't have time for all my issues. Well, just give, give, them a, give them a brief synopsis. If you feel, if you're comfortable. Okay. Oh, yeah, I've got, I'm good. I'm just, I'm going to have my left knee okay. replaced on right. Wednesday. I have a partial in there. Right. And now it's old. They wouldn't mm -hmm. make it anymore, so that'll be coming out with me a new one. All right. A full one here. All right. You were by. I had some rotator cuff. She's our six year old here. Yeah. <laughs> good for you. So, you all take care, right? Yes. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Do you know this dance? Well, I think you've all heard me. My you've mentioned yeah. mention my chiropractor who keeps me mm -hmm. going. So mm -hmm. this is Dr. Rakovic, and I think very highly of him, and I think we're privileged to have him here. And I'm, Glad Denise was instrumental in making it happen. I am Flamina Sebastian. I, I don't have anything else to say. You take care of your body, that's the biggest yeah. good, good thing. You know. Hi, I'm Rosalie, and uh, my, if anything, which I have it under control, is cyanide nerve. <laughs> this is what I do. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. So as good. long as I stretch, and, and coming here, she showed me what to do. And uh, uh, it really has helped a lot. <laughs> That's the point. We've got to take care of body, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It just stretches right back here, mm -hmm. and uh, so as long as and so when I feel anything, I, I uh, I'll not do it, and then okay, I better start doing it again. <laughs> we all know our bodies, right? I think right. that's the key. We have a problem going on. How do we treat our bodies well, mm -hmm. knowing what it requires to stay healthy? Yes. And class like these are phenomenal, right? Yeah. Well, we, we enjoy them and they tolerate me so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of the thing is not just doing it here, as you mentioned, it's doing it all the time, mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. I, I tell my patients, all we do it days and why? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because every day is why? So, how do we make sure we take care of our bodies? The daily, the daily self care, I think, is huge. The stretching, if need be, the strengthening, if need be, too. Even if icing, if you have side of pain, does icing up this heat help for you? I just tell patients, it's your body, it's not my body. How do you have me help you, maybe a chiropractor, a therapist, someone else, help you learn how to take care of your body? And once you get to a healthier state, if someone comes to sciatica, someone coming to uh, today, mechanic, that sciatica could be on the right leg, could barely get out of a chair, I took some x-rays, felt what's going on with the x-rays, got adjusted, showed some exercises, even sent them the videos too. So when someone understands I have a problem, 
I think especially with guys, with guys who are more, Neand- I call Neanderthals more than, than women are, they take longer to understand, I have a problem, but once you have a problem, you're gonna listen more when you're in pain. Mm-hmm. When you're in pain, now's the best time for me to help them. I have a window to teach them how to take care of the body. So we take next x-rays, the mechanic who shows them what's going on. We show them the x-rays, demonstrating with them what to do, how it's done, what you should feel, gets them to start the process like you do here, how to make sure you feel the right things, so you're treating your body so you get healthier and not sometimes overdoing it or not doing enough too. Mm-hmm. When I show someone as as Denise does too, she wants she wants to see how you're reacting to it. Right. How does that stretch feel to you? If you see like your your face is grimacing, for me I go great. That's the start of understanding. Sometimes being uncomfortable is a good thing to stretch our body more than we're used to. Sometimes we understand that. To get our body to change, it has to be under stress to adapt to that stress. Mm-hmm. By doing that, then our body can adjust to a healthier state, and that's what we're aiming for. Mm-hmm. And then adding more to your routine over time to make sure we have enough for the day, and then fine tuning that so we can do our, keep our body healthy overall. For me, myself, I go to the gym at face right now only three times a day, uh, three times a week, sorry, um, at five in the morning, to so where I stretch at wait, 4 30, stretch for 15 minutes. At that point, I go, go to the workout. That's how I routine day every day. If I don't work out those days, I'm still stretching that morning before I take my dog for a walk. So it's finding a routine every day, maybe morning, night, after whatever works for your schedule, to stay healthy. Not because we have pain, because we want to make sure the pain doesn't come back. And when someone's out of pain, for me, how do you get stronger over time? Strength gives you endurance pain later day. And your best insurance plus of pain can't come back. It's not about pain relief, it's about getting your body stronger to handle that load of our day, our stress of our day. Maybe it's going to cost me lifting water, whatever it is, maybe yard work, how do I make sure that day's going to be good? And the next day, and next day, next day. Did you just ask about lifting water? I have a lot of I know someone's history of their own team. Sometimes. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. We got that. But it's that routine I think people need to get into. Yeah. And your classes, how many days a week? Well, we do this once a week here. Okay, then we also have a yoga class here. Yes, we have a cheer right. arthritis class here. Awesome. And such. So we offer a variety of options here. The one thing we always talk about, and I hope for, hopefully I can say, is that at some point you're going to become so in tune with your body mm-hmm. that the things that you do unconsciously mm-hmm. will come to you and you'll begin to work those things into your body. Some of us are great hip swingers. <laughs> <laughs> that because that relieves our tension. Some of us are great forward bend people because we know that that helps release tension in the lower back. When you start to see yourself doing these things automatically, whether you're in class or not, that, that to me is a sign of a true yogini for one thing. <laughs> because it's become a part of your lifestyle, not just a, a temporary fix for, for an immediate problem. And by doing that, by incorporating that, and that by having it become a part of your lifestyle, as Dr. Tony says, you're less likely to have recurrence of those issues or severe recurrence. And you're also better able to manage them when they do happen because your body is stronger and read, better able to respond to it. It's almost the emotion is so important to maintain throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Physically, emotionally, and logically, you can be more alone. Mm-hmm. When we don't move enough, our body can go to a stress state, especially with chronic pain, where it wants us not to move, produce more sort of more catecholines for cortisol to keep us in that stress state hormonically, neurologically, and also chemically. It goes to our brain, it's our brain to get a whole body to stress. And people come to my office, they've been in chronic pain for so long, they're having chest pain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They're not a heart problem, they've been checked out by their others, but those nerves go to your heart, they go to your lungs, they go to your other organs of your body to feel stress and tension. Mm-hmm. So by moving and understanding what, what your body can do allows you to make sure your body stays in this relaxed state where your body can stay strong, stay, if you want to call it health stress of your day, and make you want to stay healthy. So have a little bit of movement. And I tell people too, you're your best doctor. Mm-hmm. You're your best doctor. We have enough brain cells to learn and to absorb information to understand how to help our body stay healthy, heal neurologically, and get chemically what we eat, how much exercise, how much you move. Mm-hmm. And when we're not feeling good, okay, now how do we get to that healthier state again? When you're in a healthier state, when you have a routine every day, every week, then that's your normal. Right. When you go away from that, you're going to understand, you're going to feel what it feels at home. Mm-hmm. When you're in a healthy state, that's your normal, and we have to kind of get back there. 
and then maintain it over time. Mm -hmm. We've all had, I've had COVID twice now. Okay. I've had for contributions, I have other things going on too. Mm -hmm. So I have to learn how to help my kid over overdo it versus doing too much. So it's finding your balance. Yes. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's made how it comes full circle. Right. Right. And I think each of us, as we yes. as, as we become more ageless and timeless, as I yes. have to say. Like it. We use that. We use that. Yes. Timeless. It, it is my official, my official, it's my official definition for the aging process. Ageless <laughs> and timeless. But as we become more so, and as we become more aware of our bodies, and as we become more concerned about maintaining health, you know, let's face it, when we're young, we think we're bulletproof, and we just kind of bounce along until something stops us in our tracks. But as we become more knowledgeable, as we become more aware, as our body begins to show the signs of all the wonderful things we have put through, mm -hmm. and not to say that it never stops trying to, to maintain us, thank God. Yes. <laughs> but when it starts to show those signs, that awareness, the things like your sciatic, and mm -hmm. the things like, I know you have, tension in your neck, you have issues with that, and you, your various um, issues. Arthritis. Arthritis, yeah. Yes. And, you know, yeah. yeah, and stuff. And we become more aware, we want to be able to find those tools that work. Chiropractic, science. If you think well, and a lot of this is not, and it's depending, it's understanding who's the information to, right? Mm -hmm. We want to stay healthy, we want to become dependent on medications, mm -hmm. or being told, to, I had a patient, uh, she was told not to because of right? that caused more weakness, more mm -hmm. tightness, more pain, but because that advice it got her into a worse state. So I want to make sure this is someone that has, if you want to cause someone's well-being in mind, not just the quick fix. Mm -hmm. So understanding where your coming from too, have trusted sources. Pick the nieces for can, can I get you to discuss a little bit about the alignment mm -hmm. in the body Good. and why it's so important that we you're aware of what I do, number one, is always have people do, is do we sit more or do we stand more throughout the day? What do you think? Sit. Sit, sit or stand, sit. right? Mostly sit. When we sit, have most people sit, they sit like this. You can't use the back of the chair. Some people in economic are told at their offices that they should have a foot rest here doing this the whole time. Okay, here I'm going to take a nap. That's what I'm going to do here in this position. The problem is here, now our back is doing this. If my feet are in front of me, then now my whole body's having to hunch forward. And rule of thumb, if I'm in flexion, my bones stick, they get tighter, my muscles get weaker. My body's spinal position, alignment if you want to call that, the most of the position is going to be straight up. I want to have my feet underneath me as my checklist, my knees below my hips, and my hips on the first third of the chair. This allows me to sit up straight in my seat, like I'm standing ergonomically, allowing my spine to hold my body weight versus my muscles. Are bones more dense or thicker or stronger or muscle? What do you think? Bones or muscle? What's, what has a thicker, dense material? Bones, right? Simple. So if bones are more dense, they can hold more load, letting your body sit on top of your bones, versus make your muscles hold you from falling forward. So I want to make sure someone, again, simple checklist, feet underneath you, knees below your hips, hips are first to the third of the chair, head up. And if I have a screen, I'm looking this way, I'm not doing this. And some people say, well, I'm gonna, I'm going to, if you want to call it, stay here. The problem is now I want to do one more thing, shoulders have to roll back. So I want someone to feel, so you can see it too, I want to feel my lower back almost hunch forward a little bit or lean forward a little bit to have good position so my muscles are activated, hold me from falling backwards. If I get my body to lean back more now, my muscles work, they're active, isometrically contracting to hold my body up versus relaxed, overly stretched, and becoming weaker over time. If I do this, my body will naturally, being instead of gravity more toward my feet, stay upright versus here, I, can nat I will naturally want to hunch forward. So use your biomechanics properly. I took a feel too. The back of the chair is just decoration. Mm -hmm. hmm. There's not really much, but you can put a picture on there if you want. You should be able to sit here for a long period of time, especially the classes you do here, to make your body stay healthy and strong. So from this position, 
Now, the same mechanics from my hips to my head should be the same when I'm standing. So what people do is stand against the wall, or if that's a mirror, I guess, here, with your heels, hips, shoulders, and head against the wall, hips, shoulders, and head. So I'm staying here as a normal position, as a, well, not normal, but an ideal position. Mm -hmm. By having that, someone may say, it doesn't feel comfortable. I go, fantastic, we have something to change. My body is used to this, is used to this every day, what's gonna happen? That's their normal. So I want them to see and feel what, what ideal normal is, because again, here, you're gonna have the least likely chance of having back pain, neck pain, headaches, arm pain, sciatica, um, anything neurological or, or mechanical. So I wanna make sure our body can reset itself every day and stay here. How do I reinforce this position? By walking. So walking, I'm gonna walk this way. How many patients do? Against the wall, take a step forward. So try this, so let's go against it, if you guys don't mind. Try, you wanna uh, try a flat surface. Come on, flat and bar. Just like, bar might be a little painful. Don't want to do that. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'll switch positions. Here. Go here. Go against the wall all the way. Yeah, because we're up against the bar. Or the one mirror. Sorry, mirror. From there, now bring your feet again. Feet touch the wall. Hips, shoulders, and head. With your shoulders too. Roll your shoulders back a little bit, as Lisa showed you before. So we're staying here. What's this do? It brings your hands either open, open here, um, or at least even. Is it is it virtual? No, it's it's, it's not live. Okay, are you filming? Uh, yeah. Okay, so the students that are here will need to sign a release from you for filming them. So you should get a workshop in, on other other Wednesday too. Yeah. So, okay. So they sign to release for us to film them, but you will need a release for them to. Cool. Done. Okay. Cool. Good. And, yeah, and in the future, please let us know because literally it's not always my own. Of course, of course. Got it. Okay. So here, we're going to do, most people when they stand against the wall, they start doing this. Why did we do this with our palms facing out? The reason is our shoulders are normally forward. If we had, we have to learn where our body should go. Having your hands here is your test that my shoulders are open versus being closed. So if we're going to focus on something, let's keep our hands open as much as possible. So if they if they rest here with your thumbs pointing forward, it's a lot better than your thumbs pointing toward you. All right. Any questions about that? Big mountain pose, ladies. Mountain pose. See, I didn't know this one. Yeah. All right. So here, if I'm here now, take a step forward for me, and with take a step forward, same position. Put the weight on your heels. Lean back in your heels. If you feel like you're falling forward a little bit, fantastic. That's when we train our body here to stay here when we stand, when we walk. So we walk heel to toe, head up the whole time, instead of midfoot here, going this way. So we want to roll our feet too, as you probably spoke of too, sorry, is we roll our feet heel to toe so we don't smash our legs together on the ground. So try a couple steps that way and see how that feels. Does that feel weird? Yeah. See a couple like, oh no. We haven't done this before in class. We've done the sobriety test, but then <laughs> <laughs> I do that only at night when you're driving home. <laughs> when you put some other stuff to yeah. it's about to make sure to do it. And try that back to again. Remember, head up the whole time. Let your feet learn to use perception, proprioception, so then you can just use your eyes to know where you're gonna go. Most people do this, they want to sit in front of them. It's gonna be fine. That point, head up, so now your body can reset itself where it has to go. Try that going back to. Let's see. Weird, awkward, and come like a back in junior high school. I understand. Oh, no. Right? <laughs> but it's something to where we can train our body. And if, if you're if you're willing to get it, let's try some home against the wall, most likely to. Is here now try and do it with your eyes closed. That point, your brain really has to work to use your feet to balance up your body. It's something in your brain called the writer's reflex that allows you to use the horizon as a way to balance your body. If I'm not using that, then my body has to get now what do I do? Your feet are their best way, your appropriate stuff, especially with, with a bare foot, to really feel where your body has to go when you go heel to toe, with your head up the whole time. Any questions about that? No, but I do have a question. Yes. Because even 
I find with myself, and mm -hmm. quite a few people I have the, the opportunity to observe, mm -hmm. there are times when I come forward with my head, even, mm -hmm. even if the rest of me is aligned, and I know that that creates that. That neck tension. Mm -hmm. So allowing your body to go, I need to, if, if this, is a, this is more of a habit, if I feel I'm going for it, I gotta make sure my chin goes back. Okay. I'm staying here, my shoulders, feel it stays open. Once I feel my shoulders come up, it has to shorten those muscles in your upper traps, get your head to come forward. Once you feel those muscles tighten up to hold your head back, you gotta, okay, I gotta give my head back again. But again, it's, it's tough because, especially standing is easier, I think, to do that. But when we're sitting, then we get the problem where we're sitting, and now we're doing to start our, our realize our, our head is not an even weighted bowling ball. Mm -hmm. Facial bones and teeth are most weighted the skull. At that point, we have to physically teach our, teach our body to translate our head backwards to stay here instead of stay here. And how does that work? Getting your upper back muscles stronger. Getting your lower back muscles stronger. By doing these classes and doing these classes and taking things home that work for you, to actually do them every day. How many days a week? Every day, even the Sabbath. But it allows you to reset. I went for, I had to do, where did I go yesterday? I had to drive yesterday. And again, I was driving, I was traffic. So I took the steering wheel and contracted my shoulder blades the whole time. Contract, relax, contract, relax, to get my upper back to work the whole time. So can you get these muscles back here to really keep your body in the whole time instead of Relax out. Again, as you, as you learned here too, it's the balance of, of your pec muscles, pec minor, pec major, anterior delt, medial delt, posterior delt, upper traps. That balance of contracting backwards is not natural because we sit so much. So we have to naturally or actively contract those muscles over time to keep our body back. That, that yes. All that helps in regards, I've heard that the... Uh, Slip disc? Slip disc, yes. It'll keep, if you go, and again, good question. If the body's an extension, mechanically the bones take the pressure off the disc. The body's in flexion, then there's more pressure on top of the disc. The disc is like a, it's a disc, it's like a wad, it's, it's a flat little pancake. The very front and back, especially the, the front, is not very strong. And the sides are not very strong. So once you go forward, you can slip that disc back very easy. When we go back, that thicker part hold is meant to hold our body weight more. So you can focus on getting your body to extension wherever you are sitting, standing, moving, allows your body to not put pressure on those discs, to allow things to get to stay in a normal, ideal position. If you're not getting it stronger here, getting your back muscles, rectus spinae muscles, rectus spinae muscles go where, Denise? Rectus spinae muscles? Oh, Your whole spine, right? Spine. So come around to this corner. So here, stand facing that way. Right spine. Also, you have three sections: base of the skull, mid back, mid back, right below your bra line, bra line down to your tailbone. But getting the extension, leaning back more, leaning back more, leaning in more, it gets all of them to contract and work. So when you feel that, for example, sciatica, I'm going to think in my head, if I'm normally good, how do I get that area stronger? How do I make sure these back muscles get stronger? How do I do kickbacks? How do I do legless? How do I do a warrior pose to make sure that area stays strong? Every day. Every day. So these are religiousness? All of them. All of them. Lats. Oh, yeah. oh, the rich are basically one, one, they're deep yes. spinal muscles, but you have about seven layers back muscles, three mm -hmm. layers mid-back, and about four layers upper back. Okay. So the deep, deep muscles of the spine is what I'm worried about, make sure they get stronger. Mm -hmm. Those are muscles that surgeons, back surgeons see, are the weakest muscles of the back when they did back surgery. Because people don't work them properly. Or they're locked up. I get patients that, they work out a lot, but the problem is their spine is locked up. So I have to release that spine pressure to make those bones move, so those deep muscles do work better. Then the disc can release. Then what you're doing now will be more effective. These yes. muscles here, mm -hmm. okay, yep. tend, this is where I tend to have challenges, mm -hmm. okay, and so where do I need to 
to help support this? She would be getting the glutes activate more, mm -hmm. as you know, mm -hmm. and also I would say erector spinae here and the deep muscles that come across some of the obliques mm -hmm. to make them work better. Okay. So for me, it would be doing, for example, here, I took a chair, mm -hmm. and doing kickbacks here, hold for one side, again, both sides individually. If you do them both at the same time, that would be a miracle. I can't, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that on anything. And then work with some of these side muscles too. Okay. okay. Here, then here, keeping the knee up mm -hmm. and coming out. Okay. So these are free pose. Yep. Mm -hmm. And just holding that. I like holding the muscles so you really feel it. Mm -hmm. And then you relax. Pull rotations around. Exactly. That's good as well. For the you think about six, six uh, ranges of motion, correct? Mm -hmm. We have we have if you want to call it lateral. We have let's see since we had a what we have a. X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. We want to make sure all those axes are rotation, okay. lateral bending, and what's the other one? Don't, don't put me on the spot. Rotation in left and right, and lateral bending. Okay. okay? Those are the main motions, secondary motions. So we have to make sure we have all the muscles and joints in rotation and also lateral bending. Lateral bending also flexion extension too. That's a little thing. So we say oblique. Mm -hmm. Obliques here. Uh -huh. Okay? We want to do lateral bends too. Sides. Hold, hold, and then uh, what's the one I missed? Flexion and extension. For, yeah, for so we want to make sure we're working all the range of motions all the time. Because we don't do these normally. We no. don't do these naturally. And I like doing those, the rotations on the floor, uh -huh. because when you're lying flat, you can't hurt your back. There's no vertical load of weight on your body on your lower back if you have a lower back issue. There's no there's no gravity pushing your body weight on the lower back. If I'm standing, there's a better chance of hurting myself, so lying down, you get to see the stay open. We don't have the option to lay on the floor. Then standing. You stand it's fine. Better. And using a chair mm -hmm. is part of it too. Okay, we do use the chair. That point, that gives you more stability. Okay. I think that's the key is, what can we do, what, what can we do versus what we can't can do. Okay. And then trying things that may be uncomfortable, you get a little stronger, a little more flexible. Be consistent every day. If you know, like for example, I blew my knee up before, I blew my shoulder up before. If I don't keep them loose, if I don't keep them strong, they tighten up. During COVID gyms were closed down, I had no weights, I had no five, five pound pink weights, that's all I had. So I'd do 50 of these and 50 of these and, and keep moving around until I figured something started to warm up. Okay, and that spinal alignment, mm -hmm. is that gonna help support when we do have challenges with the knees? Exactly. The knees, with the ankles. Mm -hmm. And we got, and for these we wanna make sure that we're getting it stronger and all, and get all directions, right? Your quad, your quad muscle, your knee, your upper thigh muscles are not just really one muscle. You have your magnus, you have your lateralis, and you have your medialis. So by having someone have knee pain, go try this. Do 10 of these, 10 with your foot straight up, and then your foot out to get the inside stronger, then foot in to get the outside stronger. Usually your, your lateral is the side of your, of, your, of your thigh, your quad, supported by a secondary muscle TFL band. So that's usually pretty strong. But because of that imbalance, it'll make the inside muscle weaker along with the VMO muscle around the kneecap itself. Now what if you already have a challenge and you don't have that flexibility anymore? Mm -hmm. What can be done to help? Is it, is it just building the muscles that support that area? Or it is, is but also it? testing it if it's, if it's tight. Okay. So for example, I'll have someone do this. I'll have someone go against a wall. Here, I'll try this and see if it's gonna work. Here against the wall. And if they have tight hamstrings, I'm gonna come down. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna come down and see how tight they really are. Okay. And hold that position mm -hmm. and slowly work myself up. Back up. Okay. And use your body weight to really stretch those hamstrings out. Okay. You can use a roller. If you ever used a roller before, a foam roller before, yeah, use them here. But it's not very fun mm -hmm. to start. Not very fun at all but it's very effective. Okay. So if the roller works for you, we'll get your quads and also your hip okay. okay. If you have tight hip flexors, what do you want to do for tight hip flexures? You're gonna move them. Good, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Motion is motion. Yeah. That's, I always move my hat, people do mm -hmm. too, is if they can put a pad down, I'm gonna, I'll use over here, pad down on their knee mm -hmm. and do a lunge forward and up Get that back to really stretch. So that's our low lunge. That's it. That's, that's it. Coming forward, translate forward, push your body up. So that hip flexor here loosens up. 
If our hip flexors are tight, do you guys know about antagonistic muscles? Before you, before sure, you sure. over, let me just ask you. Good, good. Because if Watch the cast, cast, yep. cast it down on the floor, can I do a similar, because you were in a low lunge yes. there. I can come here and do this, and, th and this, is that comparable? You can, but so make sure we're doing that mm -hmm. when we're really going through extension too. Oh, okay, so go back. Exactly, okay, go okay, back. Extension, okay. So if you want to put your foot and your knee against the wall, and then lean back even more, okay. And bring that bring that outside foot further back as when you're comfortable really stretch that hip out and look up and if i have the knee restriction mm -hmm. then and i would almost i'd almost you want to support a little bit this way mm -hmm. put more weight on your right leg okay and slowly keep your foot backwards okay. as, far as, you as you can and then, and then come back. lean back and put more weight on that outside but back this, hip this knee is not as far forward, forward because of the restrictions mm -hmm. So with that being said, then you can take it all the way yeah. back as far as you can. Exactly, and take the load off that knee into your opposite right hip to stretch it out. Gotcha. Okay. The reason people do this stretch is when we sit a lot, we get tight hip flexors. Mm -hmm. The muscles short. If, my, if our antagonistic muscles, if it's tight here, mm -hmm. it's weak here. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure we keep our hips loose in that process. So that's why it becomes critical that you work everything. Everything. Three, six, Hip flexors. Anything in front is usually tight. Mm -hmm. Anything in back is usually weak. Okay. So you want to you want to stretch out your front, maybe pec minor, pec majors, hip flexors, and then strengthen your back muscles okay. from your tailbone up to your neck. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. That's part of it. Okay. But really, get things that contract and move is the key. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing too, when we have problems to where our legs are off a little bit, sometimes. We'll do a lunge this way and feel comfortable. We'll go lift this way and go, it doesn't feel very comfortable. I'm gonna check for a leg length problem, for example, and we see if the legs are off or not. So do you just want to let down a quick? Oh, sure. We'll show quick. Let's see. Let's see what I'm thinking. This is a good test if you have back. Yep, I keep on your back. Okay. With chronic back problems, because if you understand, if my legs are off, then my hips are off. And I'll show you what that means. So here, as we expect, the niece is perfect. <laughs> okay, she's perfect. But if she wasn't perfect, if say her right leg is longer, or I'm sorry, shorter than her left leg, so look more like this, okay, that would tell me her hips are gonna be off. So her hips here, if this is if her right leg is higher, her left leg is lower, her hips are gonna be like this, rising this way. That's happening when she's lying down, when she's standing, you're good. Okay. When you're standing, my right leg's longer, I'm gonna start doing, I'm gonna start doing this to compensate. Instead of being flat, even here, even here, level, I'm gonna start doing this to compensate. If I do this long enough, and now my body doesn't want to go this way, I'm gonna stay back here, center of gravity, I'm gonna cause lower back pressure. So allows me, by doing that test, allows me to say, okay, now we're at the focus on really is doing that lunge stretch or the modified one on the wall to get those hips to stay loose. We're all off a little bit anatomically, that's, that's normal. Mm -hmm. But if we're off enough, now I'm here enough, here, 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 my body's gonna come back, this and upper body, now we're, where's all that torque, where's all the pressure? Right here. If I'm here, my body will naturally, without me thinking of center of gravity, will shift here to drop that hip. Now I come back to center, and I'm here. I go to pick something up to my left. I go to do this, and now I pinch it. So I want to make sure people understand if they have that, how do I do enough of those lunges, modify it or on the wall, to make sure those hips stay even, then get stronger there. Get your, get your back stronger once the stage is open. For example, I have someone who has that and they walk a lot for exercise, which is great. I want them to do the stretches first, mm -hmm. walk, do stretches again. Because your body has already learned to make that their normal, right? Mm -hmm. This is their normal. So we want to make sure over time we correct that and then reset and then lock it in with the walking. Might be a question. You're good. You're good. <laughs> okay. yeah, I don't good. want to take over your time. But a lot of us are walkers. Yes, okay. fantastic. And that tends to shorten or shorten muscles more so, say, than when we're stretching and doing our yoga yes. or our Pilates. Mm -hmm. So where does, 
the balance lie with that? So I, I know you say stretch before, stretch after. I, I'm more of a stretcher, but for me, a stretcher before, that's my thing. Okay. But mm -hmm. it's being aware of where your body is. And anytime, for example, if I'm going to walk, mm -hmm. I'm going to do my things, and I'm going to take a break, take a nap, take a rest, I'll make sure I stretch before I rest. Because okay. how do you normally rest? You do what? We sit, right? Or lie down, whatever it is, dude. Mm -hmm. So when you sit and lie down, it shortens again. So okay. can we, before we do our, our rest period, mm -hmm. after our workout or our day, make sure we stretch again? Okay. When that's going to be? Someone's working full days, have a stretch before work, come home before they rest, before they tighten up again, have a stretch again. Okay. Then they get the benefit. Because okay. once you go to relax, things cool down, they naturally tighten. We sleep, they tighten. Mm -hmm. So your recommendation is that before we settle in. Before you end your day, or before I go to settle in, Watch my soap opera, what I'm going to do at night. Mm -hmm. At that point, we do my stretching. And make sure. Mm -hmm. One more time before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. I think, again, the routine is going to be up to you. Mm -hmm. But that's usually what works for people based on their schedule. Okay. okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Any questions, ladies? This was a weird question. But yes. And it's probably been about six months. I've been coming about mm -hmm. five months. But on the left, mm -hmm. hip flexor, it'll catch. Like, when uh, you're going down. And it's probably because... You know, I've been dealing with these knee and issues for exactly. 15 years. So I finally mm -hmm. got this one. This was this was my bad one. This one needed surgery for, you know. So I'm hoping that the surgery will help that. But even like yesterday when I was gardening, you know, I'm trying to catch up and do everything yeah. I can't in the next yeah. few yeah. weeks. So coming up, oh, and it caught big time. So, you know, the old school, no, I can't do it anymore. Yeah. But you know when you would sit and you you put your feet together and then you spread your legs like a frog or whatever, you know. And you push your legs down. So laying in bed, you know, I can tell this leg goes flat. It's you not know, as even tight. With, even with the full knee, I can almost get it to the mattress. But so laying down, can you stretch? Go for it. Go for it. Stretch. I just want to show you something that I might have thought about. Yeah. Yes. Is, can we do that same one? Well, you can use the other one. Okay. Yeah. It's huh. It's here. And then a modification. Is try this. Just to see. Exactly. What I'm going to have you do is bring your leg, let's do it this way. Bring your leg back this way on the chair. Use this one for balance. Then lean back and slowly bring your leg, this is your left side, left side. Bring your leg back this way. Allow your foot to come further back. And see if that feels okay to you. Yeah. Want to try that? Let's see, I said, by doing this here, there should be no knee pressure, it should be more of a muscle stretch. I'm trying to see. Might well. Yeah, might as well. Uh-oh. You should call me later. Sorry, no. <laughs> I don't it's time. Okay, yes. so left knee, yeah. go back as far as I can, and then that feels good. And then bring that foot, if you can, further back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. How does that feel? Fine. I don't really feel anything. Good. I mean, I don't have So anything. lean back a little bit, too. Lean back. Oh, yeah, I feel it right here. There you go. Perfect. Oh, wow. And for you at home, at the side of the bed, same thing here, let your leg drop on the side of the bed at home, okay. and then let your foot slowly come back with your shoe on to hold that position. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, if you have to this here for balance too, if you want to use yeah. your balance, okay. and push no, back more, push back more if that goes Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah. Huh. Just to see if that's going to help. I'll get modifications. Nice. But at home, at side of the bed, the leg fall off, you let that leg come back. See this? This is normal. Thing. This is the total knee, and it's, of course, uh, it's mad because it's I've been that. doing too much this last week. Okay, so I won't do that. Obviously. That's the one thing you can do to get that hip loose for here. Yeah. Okay. And if you feel comfortable, go on even a foam roller. Oh yeah. And put that basically here up, and keep that loose too. Okay. Anytime I have a quad tightness, yeah. or even a knee tightness or a hip tightness, I always test the patient with rolling out the whole quad. Because anywhere in the muscle, it's going to attach to the knee and of the hip to cause those hip pains too. Realize your, your quad muscle, right? Any muscle in your body, your belly of the muscle is always the strongest, but attaches with tendons to your knee and to your hip. To the hip yeah. So you want to make sure those tendons are loose. If not, they can pull on the bone and make the joint feel tight. Right. And there are a lot fewer, in my experience, there are a lot fewer 
readily accessible stretches for the quads, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. say for the hamstrings or the glutes or even the calves. I, I find it a lot more challenging to find things. And, that and holding the stretch too for like a 30 seconds to a minute would allow the hips and mouth tendons to really stretch. Mm -hmm. If you're comfortable, you can go on a roller and put that roller right here and lie, and lie down flat, even trying to bed first, and let that leg slowly extend backwards. That's my night. If, I, if I'm reading for my battle on my stomach on a mat, put my put five minutes on the quad here, a roller, let my leg come back, and five minutes on the other side. And you slowly let things stretch. Sleeping positions probably. It depends. It's, it's different for everybody. It's when you when you sleep, the back is always the best. But if you're side sleeper, that's fine too. But when you sleep in neck, you tighten up. If you have injuries, the body heals when we don't move. So it's going to heal tight. So the car accidents, I've got a lot of whiplash cases in my office. Mm -hmm. Is I always ask them, how do you feel in the morning? And they keep telling me, man, it still hurts in the morning. It's still healing. You can't be too aggressive. Because things have to heal to get, to get to get stronger, but they get tight at the same time. If you get tighter, that's the problem. Tight is what I'm worried about. Yeah. That's why the morning is so important to kind of know where your body is. How do I feel in the morning? What feels tough, what feels sore? What do I have to tonight, the next night, stretch before I go to bed to keep those areas loose? That being able to do that in bed. Ideal, you know, because Huge. you're already you're already there. Oh, yeah, you're there. So, and so no. you don't have to worry about getting up and down off of a hard surface. In my office, I had a table, so I'll have some, you know, leg back behind the table, lie flat, see which side feels tighter. Do both sides typically, but then make sure those hips stay loose. And sometimes you can have back tightness from that too. So if you try that at home, make sure when you come back, okay, if it's tight back here, you back it off a little bit to make sure I can handle that pressure. Yeah, just work. What does it work? All right. Questions, ladies? Now, I've never heard about stretching after mm -hmm. walking or before you go to bed. Mm -hmm. So, how many minutes do you do this? Oh, whatever I do in the morning, do the same thing at night. Oh, okay. And, and it doesn't take very long. Yeah. But it's something we don't think about. Stretching is yeah. basically doing what we what do. We do exactly yeah. what we do. Yeah. The warm ups that we do. If yes. I want to feel good tomorrow, I'm going to stretch today. Yeah. <laughs> if I have a good workout tomorrow, I'm going to stretch today. If, I, if I'm going to have a, just a normal day, I'm going to stretch today. I don't want to think about it. I'm not very, uh, I don't want, it's too many things up there already. I just stretch because I, I know it's part of my routine. A cup of coffee in the morning. It's my part of the stretch routine. Here's the, the most important thing I'm hearing here, aside from mm -hmm. specific um, technical things, consistency, consistency, consistency. Every day. Consistency, consistency, consistency. And if you have something that does bother you, before you go to bed, make sure you stretch again. Make sure we stretch. And make sure tomorrow feels good. We can always strengthen, that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. But if you strengthen all of a sudden, oh, I pull my calf, what did I not do? I forgot to stretch. Mm -hmm. But I forgot to warm up. That's the key. It's just keep you consistent. Show up every Wednesday, you'll be fine. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'll leave some cards for you too if you need some cards. Oh, please. Thank you. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it.